also another friend from Facebook has posed a topic or question and that is on recovering creativity and basically she was talking about how many and, and I'm glad she brought this up um, and it, I have a lot to say on this being an artist also being someone who uh, has taught uh, painting workshops uh, so I have a lot to say on this so this is an awesome topic and not often brought up and um, so basically she was talking about, uh, and it's true, how a lot of people um, don't realize that they're talented or believe they're not talented or start to go, you know, uh, express themselves in, t in cr creating things and being whatever their talents happen to be, their artistic expressions. But then because of, of other people's talents and in the world, uh, they, you know, they start to... Uh, they may start to feel uh, a comparison and then uh, kind of lose it and lose the motivation. So I'm glad this came up because it's important. It's important to look at because it's it has to do with us. It has to do with the world. Uh, it has to do with illusion. First of all, we're all creative. I say this to my students. Any student, because always I'll get students who walk and go, "I'm not creative." Wrong. Eh. <laughs> That's a, that's a delusion. We're all creative. We're creative. Uh, that, first of all, that whole that even that idea that someone says that you you created that. That's a, that's a story you just created. So even in in that ridiculous you know claim, it's a storytelling talent. You're you're creating this baloney story that I'm not talented. And I, and as they now they can go on. That kind of person will go on about how they're just not talented. And what they're doing right there is creating something. They're they're telling a story with some real pizzazz to it because they're putting their belief into it. So right there, it's revealed. We're all talented. We're all creative. It's in our nature. Um, some. Uh, are encouraged to express it depending on our environment growing up more than others. Uh, some naturally just gravitate towards the earth more. But we're all creative, we're all artistic. We see it as little children. All children, you stick a pile of kids in a sandbox, they're going to start creating things. All of them, every single one of them. It's only when the illusions of, of of the mind start to take hold the illusions of society and the conditioning and all that and the, the competition, this needless competition where no competition is needed and comparison and all this stuff. This is where really the system derives creativity or at least uh, it can have the effect if we allow it to. It derives the creative juices out of us. And especially when trying to make a living. A lot of artists will stop creating because they try to make a living at it, whatever it is, whatever type of artist they are. And it can be difficult uh, because you, your choices are really, uh, in most art forms, if you want to make it big, you pretty much have to give up your creative freedom and create to somebody else's tune of what they want which isn't really what creating an art, artistry is about. So some can find a balance, and that's great. Some can still find their own key control, their own uh, artistic expressions, and yet find a way to, to make a living at it or even become famous at it, and that's great. Uh, those are few and far between. Most of us find it difficult to do both. And so some choose to then just give up. Some choose just to don't worry about making a living at it. Just do it on the side, whatever is their, you know, their artistic expressions and whatever you got to do to make a living. In addition, just do that. I mean, we have lots of choices. But the important thing is that you don't give up uh, your creative because it, that's what it is to be human. We're here to create. We are creative beings. It's in everything we do. And so... Um, the best way to enjoy this experience of life and to discover this experience of life and discover yourself is to express through artistic creations, whatever it is. 
And something that's o o quite overlooked, and, I, and occasionally I, I bring it up in my posts and videos, is, and, I, and this is a perfect opportunity to state it again, so thank you again for bringing this up as a topic, because what a lot of people don't really see is we live in the age of the artist. We truly do. And I say that because no time in history has the general collective had the freedom to express itself artistically and have the means to share it with the world. If you think of it, and really I'm talking about the internet. And even the tools we have, anybody can grab a camera now and, and buy programs and make their little movies and do it with their own special effects. I mean, an animation, anybody can find animation programs now and do their own animation. People can find their own programs, do, mix their own music and create their own music and et cetera, et cetera, and writing, and it just list goes on and on. And if, if you look around you, uh, it would be almost impossible not to find somebody around you who is not an artist of some sort, whether they think they are or not. Everybody plays an instrument, everybody dabbles in some kind of art, visual art form, or or, or writes, or, or maybe does arts and crafts, or it doesn't matter what it is. It, it, you know, anybody you meet, talk to them. You're gonna, if you really listen, if you really look at them, they're, they are engaged uh, in one or many art forms. So we're all artists, and we live in a time where the technologies are there and, and, and everything is there, so we, we have so much access to it now, where, you know, where we didn't before, and, we, and the biggest thing is we have access to share it now. We can share it online with the world, uh, which is amazing if you think about it. It's amazing where we can all express whatever we want, and we do. So we really truly do live in the age of the artist where humankind's um, desire and natural creativeness can shine through. And so all I would say about, to get back to the specific question, uh, was, you know, what can we do to recover is, well, don't, don't let don't let the system crush, you know, crush your creative juices. Um, creating has nothing to do with making money. It's great if we can do make money or, or, or make a life for ourselves based on it, but that has nothing to do with creativeness. So don't let don't let a silly concept, an idea, which has been conditioned, which we've been conditioned to believe, which is false, uh, let you deter you from doing what you were meant to do. So. Basically, how do you recover it is just to do it. It's just to, first of all, let go of any of those silly illusions, those silly ideas, that silly conditioning. Uh, there is no comparison. You can't compare. It's all relative. Uh, if, basically, to me, everything is art. If someone purposely wanted to create something, then it's then if, as far as I'm concerned, whether I like it or appreciate it or resonates with me, it's art. If someone sits down and was feeling, you know, and, and sticks their finger in some dog poop, smears it on the ground because they felt moved to, the truly, they're not trying to, you know, pretend to be an artist or whatever, but they're really just expressing and something came to them and they started smearing the poop around on the ground and, and whatever. And if, if to them that was an expression, then it's art. It may not be my art, I just see a piece of crap, right? <laughs> to play around with euphemism, euphemisms, but, but still, you know, one man's piece of crap is another man's uh, masterpiece. So, you know, that's why, too, I would recommend um, to let go of those ideas. And, and, and if, you, if you find that you've, you've had trouble letting other people's opinions affect your creativeness, then I would also recommend doing what a lot of us do. I don't go into the artist's communities I never really have. It's cool if you find strength in it and camaraderie and it works for you. For some of us it doesn't because really it has to do with a small group of people that want to judge other people's artwork. And Like if somebody brings me in a gallery and wants me to say, I don't really have anything to say about other people's artwork. I mean, either I like it or I don't. It's cool, but I mean, who am I to say anything about somebody's artwork, <laughs> you know what I mean? It either, it either touches me or it doesn't, and that's, and that's, 
as you create, that's how you should create from too. That's my whole thing when I create something, whether it's a video or whether it's my children's books or my, whatever it is, you know, my paintings or whatever. For me, take you know, take what you want from it, or, and, and if you don't get anything from it, throw it away. But I learned early, early on just to to not worry about you know what other people think. It either works for you or it doesn't. I remember that I got that lesson. Here, I'll tell you a little, quick little story. I, when I was in my, uh, I, I I can relate to this because I too I, I actually was artistic. You know, well, we all are. But I mean, I was I I, I I was showed me my twin brother showed a real tendency towards visual arts uh, when we were little, basically infants. Actually, we <laughs> we were we we, we always get told the story of how uh, my, my sisters were babysitting, they came up and me and my brother were in the crib and they came in and they heard giggles and me and my twin brother had done these elaborate murals on the wall using the only paint we had available, which was the shit in our diapers. <laughs> so they came in and hear these two toddlers, you know, at the crib just uh, holding on, giggling and just laughing and, and, and we were creating. We were, and my sisters hated it because they had to go clean it up. <clears throat> so we showed it at an early age. And then as we grew up, my mom used to annoy her. We'd always speak to anything left around the house. We'd be doodling on her bills, documents. So she finally caught on and got us proper stuff to work with. And once she got us, you know, pencils and paints and whatever, then yeah, we left everything else alone. All we needed was a medium. So we used what we had. When they finally gave us the real mediums, then we stopped to... Uh, using poop and bills and documents and whatever. So, anyways, we, we, we did show tendency, but as we started to grow up, conditioning set in. And I started to believe, uh, which there can be some truth to it, but I started to, to believe too much into the, you can't make a living as an artist. That was kind of drilled into me uh, from a lot of different sources. Uh, so I just found that as I, I just I, I did a little bit in my spare time doodling, but I, I didn't really take it seriously until I was really in my late 20s, 28. And then uh, some major things happened, career changes happened, and uh, you know my life took some turns I didn't expect it to career-wise, and I was kind of left thinking, no, now what the hell do I do? And so. Um, I did something dry, something in me moved me and said, let's let's go back to the arts and explore the arts. So I, I, I spent a year just teaching myself how I hadn't painted. I had doodled other stuff, but I hadn't painted. So at the age of 28, I taught myself to paint. And that led to, then I realized, uh, you know, that uh, I, w I, I felt a desire to teach. I was always good at explaining things and my different job functions and work functions. So I realized more than, than the actual painter, I was good at showing people. So I started doing workshops and stuff like that. But when I first got into it, in my, when I, as I said, when I was around 28, for that year and I started painting, I, I did try to sell some of my work. And uh, so I did some, I, I painted a lot of pictures and then I went to, I went to a, a festival in the city that I lived in, a summer festival, cultural festival, where a lot of artists sell their works. So I thought, oh, I'll get a booth or set up a tent, you know, just see, you know. So this is the story I want to tell you where I really learned, it's like the universities gave me right off the bat, just, just gave me the lesson right away. So clear and crisp. So it, it was beautiful. And so basically what happened is I, I, I did all these paintings and I set up this tent. I got this like wedding tent I rented and I put white sheets everywhere on the easels and made it all kind of artsy fartsy and really put my heart and soul into it. And so I set it all up and it was a four day festival outside in this big park, beautiful. And the very first guy that walks in and this guy, and you see he had a lot of money and he, he had lots of jewelry on every finger and hanging from his neck, middle-aged. And he was kind of walking around with this kind of persona this of, of like, I rule the world, you know. He was like, he looked like a king surveying his, his kingdom, you know. He was just strolling with his 
chin held high and just, you know, feet shooting out ahead of him, just look like, you know, Caesar <laughs> patrolling, you know. And uh, that's how he came into the tent. And uh, he was my very first, I would say customer, he didn't buy anything, but he, he came in and it's, the universe gave me what I needed and uh, he came in and he looked around, took his time, and then he came up to me and he said, is this your artwork? And I said, yeah, a big smile on my face and all excited and just to be showing my works, you know. And um, he said, yeah, you're new to this, right? <clears throat> and I said, yeah. He said, yeah, I can tell. You're not very good. Just like that. You're not very good. So I was just like, you know, the, the it was like using a punch straight at the gut. It was a, all the wind, just, just whoo, you know, all that effort, all that just to show my work, and then the very first guy to say something like that. <clears throat> so it hurt, it hurt, and I remember I just stuttered and stammered and said, "Oh, sorry, you, you feel that way." And I, really, that's all I stammered, stammered, and then he just walked out like this big smile on his face. He felt very powerful. And uh, then it started to seep in a little bit, and I got pissed. <laughs> like, Ooh, who's this mother, you know, who's he thinking, you know, we went through the, the states. And then quickly, I just, I just thought, you know what, just forget about it, you know, it just has nothing to do with you. That, that had everything to do with him, and it has nothing to do with you. Obviously, there's no reason he needed to do that. If he if he didn't like the work, he didn't have to say anything. You know, he was that's his own issues. And of course, now I, it's so, so many decades later, now I know what that really is all about. And that's just him. You know, that's just something he's desperately struggling with. But it was great. It was it, it served me because then after that. It was a completely, after I let that go, it was a completely different reaction. People loved my works. They loved the paintings, even the ones that I thought they weren't very good. People loved them. So it's all relative, right? What, what some people will, will find something in the works and some people won't, whatever it is. Whether you're a visual artist, whether you're a writer, whether you're a musician, it doesn't matter what it is. So you just put it out there. It's about expressing and enjoying the experience of expressing. And then if people get something from it, great. And if they don't, whatever. It has nothing to do with you. Comparison is stupid. You can't compare art. So when you see, that's like, like I said earlier, when some of us kind of steer away from the art communities if it doesn't serve us, uh, that's because there's a lot of comparing and it's silly to compare. Who, is, who are we to judge? It's all, it's all art. If it's a true expression, then it's art. So, to wrap this up, uh, don't give up. Don't stop creating. Why would you? That's what you're here to do. If you like it, enjoy it. Don't worry about whether you make money on it or not. Certainly don't care what other people say about it or not. Just put it out there. It doesn't matter what other people think about it. Just, just do it. Do it and enjoy it. That's what you're here for. So that would be my advice, is just, uh, just embrace the age of the artist, go for it, enjoy it, don't worry about the results, don't worry about what comes from it, just do it. And that's the best way to get over any anxieties or any conditioning or any bad feedback or comparisons or any of that silliness, and it's all silly. Just do. Just do, do, do. Create, create, create. Love and night.